Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be painting up the Killaboss on Great Nash 2 from the Dominion box set. Now, I assembled the entire model up to the point where we get in the way of painting, in which case it's just basically the shield is the only part that will get in the way. Everything else has to be assembled entirely. Ideally, we would want the rider and the mount separate, but unfortunately we're stuck with this. Now, I want to take a moment to explain my thought process into handling this model. The beast has a lot of flesh tones and stuff, and I figure that the flesh, based off the image that the box set gives, it'll be best to use an airbrush for this. And because it's an airbrush, we're then going to use dry brushing afterwards and stuff. So, overall what I come down to is I'm going to handle the beast and, his, and the base first, and then move on up to the uh, character on top. But at first, actually, I'm going to start with these stones when it comes down to it because I figure that the stones will use dry brushing and that'll be messier and harder to control and I could probably tape up most of it and uh, just airbrush the beast as needed. So that's my thoughts going into this model. Now with general purpose great car primer and Lucatex modeling putty we're going to prime and base the model. After the model is primed uh, both sides, the shield needs to be done twice. We'll then use Liquitex Modeling Putty and just apply it everywhere. We'll just slap it on, make swirls, flatten areas and stuff, and make sure there are no, uh, like, peaks coming from it. Well, I initially thought I wouldn't have to use Milliput because I couldn't really see or notice any real big divisions in the model. Uh, these became very apparent after <laughs> assembly. So, after priming and stuff, I go and take Milliput and then I just place a thin line of it and all these cracks and once I press it in I then take a old brush that's wet and I basically sand it smooth until it smoothly defines into the lines and stuff and then I re-prime the spots that I added Milliput in. So this is the image that they give us and I'm gonna try to follow it as best I can. In some places I do in some places I don't just as a spoiler. Now with Dark Reaper, Baneblade Brown, and Dawnstone, we're going to paint the stone architecture that he is on first. I figure that this will be the most messiest and the hardest to do uh, carefully around other things, so we'll do this first. We start off with all the stone with a layer of Dark Reaper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some watered down Baneblade Brown and I'm just going to like splash it in random places, faces of the stones and stuff like that. And then I'm going to take the Dawnstone and I'm going to dry brush heavily everywhere and these splashes and stuff will fade in and it will just look like some color changing. And it turns out pretty well. The Bane Blade Brown had to be diluted a little bit so that you could just see a splash of color and so it would dilute with the surrounding area or towards the edges of the paint. But yeah, it looks good. Alright then, we're going to try a bunch of stuff. So with Nagaroth Knight, Xerxes Purple, Daemon at Hyde, Cadian Flesh, and Kisla Flesh, and Administrative Grey, we're going to try the Beast's Flesh. It's a purple-toned flesh, so we're going to start off with Nagaroth Knight all over. And then with an airbrush, we're going to paint Xerxes purple uh, and have it flow, cover basically most of the model in this, and we're also taping up the stones and stuff as best we can. We then take the demonet dem hide and then airbrush it towards like the midsections, the knees, the meeting points, stuff like that. And then with Cadian Flesh Stone, we will apply this to the underside, airbrushing it in and around like, his belly and stuff as best we can. It's a little hard to get into some of these places. I go back with Nagaroth Knight and re-add some of the darkness on the feet and the top parts. I 
I then go to dry brushing. I then take Daemonet Hide and try to dry brush it on the dark purple areas in order to like add some highlight to them basically, some easy highlight. It makes bad. And then I took Kiesla Flesh and I tried to dry brush the belly and stuff. Eh, so-so. And then I took Administrative Gray and tried to dry brush it onto the light purple areas, just lightly, very lightly. And that was so-so. I try to add some more depth to it, so with Skeleton Horde Contrast mixed one to one with Lamy and Medium, I then just apply it all over the model, or the beast. And then with some acrylic ink, very dark purple, I then reapply this, this, this is a super dark color onto the feet and the back. However, note, it's going to apply a very bright shine, so you're going to need that AK Interact matte varnish to tone it down. And now with Cadian Flesh Tone, Magos Purple, Lamian Medium, Steel Legion Drab, Baneblade Brown, and Ratcraft Flesh, we are going to be painting the mouth. I'm going to start off with a base layer of Cadian Flesh Tone, and then we will take Magos Purple, mix one to one with Lamian Medium, and we're just going to apply it into the mouth. Then we will highlight the gums and the tongue with Cadian Flesh Tone, and we, off camera I did one more layer of the Magos Purple Lamian Medium, and then I re-highlighted it again. And then I went straight to the teeth, with Steel Legion Drab covering the whole tooth inside and out. Then with Baneblade Brown I painted 75% of each tooth, leaving the base of the tooth Steel Legion Drab. And then with a very thin line going up and on the very tip of each tooth with Rackarth Flesh. Alright now, with Corvus Black and Cadian Flesh Tone, we're going to start picking out some of the details and stuff. So with Corvus Black, we're going to paint a lot of the ropes that are all around him. Now, this is done in multiple passings. There's some times that some things are going to be easier to paint, and some things are going to be harder to paint later. So we're going to paint a bunch of the ropes now, not all of them. We will go back to Corvus Black and we'll paint them as the surrounding areas painted. But for right now, I mean, normally I like to do things all in one batch like the ropes and stuff, but he has it all around his body, his armor and stuff, and right now it's easier to paint these things, and later it'll be easier to paint those other ropes when other things are painted, but I'm just doing this now. And then with Cadian Flesh Tone and a very different brush, a very small brush, we're going to dry brush onto the flesh on his belly again. Oh, and Corvus Black is also painting the fur on him. Now, for some fun, with Mornfang Brown, Steel Legion Drab, Thondia Brown, and... I can't remember its name and I can't read it because... <laughs> something Brown, it'll come up later. We then just like randomly paint the different leather pieces all scattered on him. He has like a huge cloak, on his back, on his harness and stuff like that, and on the beast. So it's just, take your pick, try to make sure that they don't, uh... That Mornfang Brown doesn't touch another piece of Mornfang Brown as best you can. Just have fun with it. And now with Skeleton Horde Contrast, Golem and Flesh, Black Templar Contrast, and Lamian Medium, we're going to paint all the leather pieces. We're going to start off with a one-to-one -one with Skeleton Horde Contrast, and we're going to apply it all over all the leather that we have painted. This is going to give a yellowing effect to it. It's going to be light and subtle. Now when that dries, we're going to go to Golem and Flesh, and a one-to-one -one of Lamian and Golem and Flesh, and we're going to apply that all over it. We want to make sure it doesn't pull too heavily in areas. And then once that's done, we're going to take a one part Black Templar to two to three parts Lamian Medium, and we're just going to apply it all over the leather. 
So what we're doing is just applying these different shades and stuff and how they do is they're going to just uh, add a lot more depth, a lot more color here and there. Now the one thing about the Black Templar mix is that we're not pull we actually we're not pulling it all over all, we're just put up applying it directly into recesses and shades of the leather, sorry. It's okay, but it's not great. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to highlight. Now, however, because I've used multiple shades and darkened the color a lot, if I use the colors that I painted on before to highlight, it's going to look bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Lamy and Medium, we're going to go back to the four colors that we used to paint all the leather with. Thondia Brown, uh, Morphing Brown, that kind of stuff. And we're going to mix in Lamy and Medium with the paints directly. Now, this is going to dilute it heavily, but it's going to retain a lot of the like flow and stuff and we're gonna apply it as a highlight onto all the leather and it's going to highlight very well it's not gonna be super strong contrast it's gonna blend very easily well thanks to the Lamy and Medium and so basically we're just re-highlighting all the leather pieces mixed sort of one-to-one -one with Lamy and Medium Alright, now with Elysian Green, Auric Flesh, Nurgling Green, and Anthonian Camo Shade, we're going to paint the model. We're going to start out with a base layer of Elysian Green all over the skin of the Auric, including the arm on his shield. Then we will take Anthonian Camo Shade mixed two to one, one part Anthonian and two parts Lamian Medium, and just apply it all over. We just want a small, subtle a darkening and then we will repaint 90 to 95 percent of all the green skin with Elysian green And then with Auric Flesh, we will paint 75 to 85% of the model, focusing on the raised areas, the highlights and stuff, with Auric Flesh. And then we will do a one-to-one -one mix of Auric and Nurgling Green. And we're actually going to apply it onto the feet because his feet is higher up, so closer to light and stuff like that. So we will apply it on the most raised areas, the edges, and such and such. And then with pure Nurgling Green, we're going to apply it to his face, the edges of his face. And then finally, after painting all of this, some of the colors are too extreme, some of the colors are too low. So we're going to like sort of blend them all together, have them uh, tone together. We're going to take Anthonian Camo Shade, the same mix. That's two to one, uh, two parts Lamy and one part Anthonian, and we're just going to apply it to all of his green flesh to tie all the colors together. And then with Evil Sun Scarlet and Coelia Green Shade, which is actually blue, we're going to paint the eyes of the Auric and the Beast, as well as the lip of the Auric. The Auric is going to have uh, the Coelia Green Shade on his lips. And now with Bane Blade Brown, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and Lamy Medium, we're going to paint this, like, saddle thingy that is on this front. I don't know what it's called, but I've seen it on horses and stuff. Basically, we're going to start off with Bane Blade Brown as a base color. Then we will apply Skeleton Horde Contrast, mix one-to-one -one on it. And then we will re-highlight it again. Sorry about the camera. Uh, with all the Bane Blade Brown focusing on the edges. And then we'll apply another layer of Skeleton Horde Contrast, mix with Lamy Medium in it to add more darkness into it. However, what I should have done probably is for the f first coat, done Nuln Oil mixed with Lamy and Medium, and then uh, gone to Skeleton Horde Contrast for yellowing, because it's just not dark enough, but it's okay.
Now with Eschen Gray, I'm going to apply this to all the ropes as their highlights that are scattered throughout. However, I noticed because the base layer of the ropes was originally white and all that stuff, and when I painted the Corvus black over them, they kind of already naturally highlighted a bit, so I kind of found this as pointless, so I stopped doing it. So you can skip the step entirely if it naturally highlights. Now with Thondia Brown and Steel Legion Drive, we're going to paint the wood he has. He has his spear and he has a banner out his back. We're going to start with the base layer of Thondia Brown all over. Then we're going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Thondia Brown and Steel Legion Drive. I'm going to paint these very distinct lines that it has on the wood. And then with Pure Steel Legion Drab, water down a bit, we will apply it on the most raised, most prominent folds and stuff on these sticks. And now with Agrax Earthshade mixed one to one with Lamian Medium, we'll apply this to the wood to tone down some of the extreme highlights of the Steel Legion drab and blend all the colors together a bit. With Cadian Flesh Tone, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and Gulliman Flesh mixed with Lamian Medium, we're going to paint this skin banner he has. We'll start with the base layer of Cadian Flesh Tone on one side and, well, both sides. Then we're going to take Skeleton Horde Contrast Mix 1 to 1 with Lamian Medium, and we're going to apply it all over the banner on both sides. We will then go back with Cajun Flesh Shown and highlight everything. And then we will go with one-to-one -one of Lamian and Gulliman Flesh and apply it onto the back flesh area. Because one side will be light, the other side will be like... I don't know how to describe it, but... And I know there's no reference pages on the internet, hopefully. But I think the one side is going to have like meat stuff. Like be redder on one side of the skin. Now with Kislev Flesh and Pallid Witch Flesh, I'm going to paint the ogre head that's on that spike uh, in the back. I'm going to start off with the base layer of Kisla Flesh. Then I'm going to mix one to one with Pallid Witch Flesh and then basically cover 90% of the model, the highlights and the edges and stuff of his face. And then I'm going to go with pure ha Pallid Witch Flesh and apply it to his most raised areas, most folded areas and stuff. But this is too stark of a contrast. So what I do is I take Kisla Flesh and I mix it with Lamian Medium until it becomes a wash and then I apply it all over the head to tone it down and try to fix it. I probably should have applied maybe two to three washes of this, but yeah, well. Alright, with Kisla Flesh, Pallid Witch Flesh, Drakenhof Nightshade, Magos Purple, and Lamian Medium, we're going to paint all these severed heads that are scattered throughout. Uh, they have heads and hands, so some of them we're going to paint with Kisla Flesh. Some we're going to paint with Pallid Witch Flesh as a base color. And then once we have all the hands and the heads painted on the shield and on the beast, we will then take a one-to-one -one mix of Drakenhof, Nightshade, and Lamian Medium and apply it to some of the heads, some of the hands. And we will do that actually twice, so there will be two shades in total. Then we'll take Magos Purple mix one-to-one -one with Lamian Medium and we'll apply it to 
Eh, pretty much all of them. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna apply it to all of them. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, all the shade, they all start with a, bl a shade of blue, and then we apply purple in it, and we make sure it doesn't pull too heavily, and so it adds some interesting color in there. And I'll just use Corvus Black to paint the random hair that is on some of these guys. And now with Dark Reaper and Dawnstone, we're going to paint all the stitches that hold all the leather together and the skin together. So we're going to take Dark Reaper and we're going to apply it to all the stitches everywhere. And then once that is done, we'll take Dawnstone and just do a simple touch onto all the raised parts of each of the stitches. And then, although I did mention we have Mournfang Brown, I'm going to use it to apply it to a lot of the ropes he has holding some of these heads up. Now watch me make a mistake here. With Liquitex Matte Varnish and Natural Umber Vallejo Pigment, I'm going to make a wash with this. So what I do is I take like two or th uh, like three scoops with a brush of the Natural Umber, four or five drops of water, and two drops of the Matte Varnish, and I apply it all over the base. I should have added more water to make it flow better, but the mistake is that this is the wrong color. And I apply it also to parts of the stone architecture where the feet are, I applied onto the base of the feet like he brought in muddy paw prints and stuff like that. I then redo the entire wash again, except with more water and with the correct color light sienna. Now that all the metallics and everything is done, I will now use AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish and with an airbrush just seal everything in. Alright, I take this bright red Liquitex ink that I got from my local hobby store, and then I got some Citadel Air Runefang Steel. I'm gonna try to paint his shield red again trying this mix. I'm gonna add some Liquitex Glaze Medium and some Lamian Medium. I actually discovered a good mix uh, in this project, but not at this moment, and then I apply it onto his red shield. It's not colorful enough, it's not red enough, so then I just take the pure ink and apply it, and it's not that good. Continuing to try new stuff, I use Liquitex Acrylic Inks Noir Carbon and Burnt Transparent Carbon Black and Burnt Sienna mixed with the uh, Games Workshop uh, Runefang Steel Air. And so I added uh, like a couple drops of black and one drop of brown. I mixed it and it came out with this very dark black metal. And so it's too dark. And so I added more and more uh, Runefang Steel into this mix and it lightened each time and I used that to highlight. I then applied the dark metal to every piece of metal and uh, then I would use these more highlighted versions and just keep highlighting onto the shield, the spikes, his horns, stuff like that, and random pieces of metal. So I started with a very dark metal and I kept highlighting. I did around three different coats where I kept adding more Runefang steel, then highlighted, added more Runefang steel into the mix, and then did a final highlight. And this is where I discovered something good. I decided to, I mixed in the Runefang Steel and the Transparent Burnt Sienna, but I didn't add any Glaze Medium or Lamian Medium. And it came out so well, and mixed together so well, it highlighted the white uh, shoulder piece here with brass so well. It looked like hours worth of work was done in just a single pass. So I'm gonna be kicking out the Glaze Medium and the Lamian Medium from these future Liquitex inks. It looks great. 
and I painted a little bits of silver here and there on the random pieces of metal that were around and on these little rivets that are on the brass pieces and such. Now with this oxide color and blood for the blood god, I don't use riser rust in the end. I then add it to the details. I use the oxide color to add it to all the rivets and random small little random places on his armor and metal. I then blood for the blood god and then I just apply it to the severed heads, uh, some on the shield, and some places where you think blood would be that fits. I then did a quick wash of Skeleton Horde Contrast makes 1 to 1 lobbying medium on these brass uh, button thingies. And then finally with Evil Sun Scarlet and Null Noil I apply it to his tassels. Just a base layer of Evil Suns and Null Noil afterwards. Because it'd be easier just to paint these after the metal because they're so intertwined and stuff so I thought, you know what, why not? And done. Eh, eh, this is more of an ensemble piece. Some things turned out well, some things meh. It, it really depends. Uh, some things I didn't showcase how to do because I've done it on the previous models and I was like, I don't need to show you how to do the lilies again or whatever those things are on the ground. And uh, yeah, some things I did okay, learned some stuff. Some things just were difficult and to get right. Uh, oh well, for this I'm probably just leaning for a 7 out of 10. Some things, yeah, they did turn out great and they're good, but like overall, eh, I'm not too positive of the model. Now this model took a little bit longer because uh, it's been a sad week or so in Warhammer. Uh, Alright, but ignoring that, as far as this model goes, it is a good ensemble piece overall. It's not my best work. I wasn't that inspired in some things. I was mostly just trying out some stuff. But I've done most of this stuff before on the other models, and so, eh. Anyway, I'm now going to be moving on to the Stormcast. I'm stopping with the Cruel Boys because I'm, well, bored and uninspired. Uninspired is the worst thing that can happen. And so, I'm going to do this like how I did the Dominion box set with the Necrons. So, all the Stormcast Eternals are pretty much the same, and they can be divided into around three categories. Guys without capes, people with capes, that one silver armored character, and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna be focusing on the guys without capes in the next video. So like the video if you like the video, share it if you wanna share it, uh, comment if you wanna comment, nitpick or anything, dislike if you disliked it, like if you liked it, and I'll see you hopefully sooner. But I'm gonna be painting a lot for the next video, so we'll see.